Hello there guys, welcome to Rootstand Gaming and on today's vid we're going to show you a second hand, as you can see, very bad Land Raider and we're going to turn it round quickly and paint it up quickly for my Crimson Fists army. The idea is not to dwell or spend days soaking it in Deathlock, we're going to have a look to see what happens when you just effectively spray over the top and if you could probably look I don't think this has been undercoated. Some of the paint's come off straight away. This was actually a charity shop find for five pounds. So I'm not complaining. Um, I did have some spare, because these that was the original. Wow, it's hideous, isn't it? That was the original guy inside. That Those were the original bits that were on top. And thankfully I've got some spare sponsons from other kits. And with those spare sponsons, I've they're just basically Snip some stuff together and created just some. I just wanted some plain, some dull, um, flat copulas, copulas, copulas. Yeah, one of them. Um, I have glued everything together as well because it was falling to pieces. That's just used super glue. I know it's a plastic model kit. I mean, you can tell that that's not straight, so that's snapped off previously. But I'm just like, right, for five quid, I just want to get it painted. I want to get it on the battlefield, especially with the new codex out. And I know there's going to be gaps. Again, it's not going to bother me. I'm not looking for a perfect miniature. What we're looking for is for something that, let's see what happens when I've bought it for a fiver. I've had to take little bits off. As you can see, I've put some of my own little symbols on. So I've had to use some of my own bits. But for five quid, I'm not griping. I'm not soaking it in Dettel like a lot of people would recommend. I've done that before. It stinks. It's horrible. And I have past memories with Dettel, which is not great. So we're going <laughs> to... I'm going to go now. I'm going to spray this black. And then we're going to continue with the paint job. Okay, this is what we've got to. Uh, I've tried to cover it up with the black as best as I possibly can. You will get bits that you're going to miss. Of course, mainly on the underside. Uh, but now I'm going to actually coat it in... This is from Green Stuff World, this is Nectarous Blue. Uh, a lot of my actual miniatures, as you can remember from the test one I did uh, a bit back, they're all quite metallic blue. So, we are going to uh, use... We're going to use a metallic blue, which is Nectarious Blue from Green Stuff World. This is quite a thick colour. Now, you can brush it on, not a problem. You will possibly get some streaking marks, so you just have to be careful while you're brushing it on. It can be thinned with water or with, um, I use, sorry for the arm, the Leisure Airbrush Floor Improver. That can be used for brush as well, a lot of people don't realise. Um, it's quite easy to do as well, to be honest with you. So I'm going to basically cut nearly, nearly the entire thing in that. I'm going to keep certain things, possibly the top bit of that, that, that maybe a panel or two they're going to be red over the dark red that are of course comes in fist is mockier this is going to be quite bright so i might need to dull it down later on with a wash that's not going to be a problem again i'm going to be using the airbrush to put this on so <laughs> this is going to look very blue now as you can see that's come out really nice actually i've not had to i thinned it down i thinned the metallic color down 50-50 with about 50% water, right, so it's a 25% water, 25% floor improver, 50% paint. Uh, I did shoot that through an airbrush. Again, you guys don't have to. You can follow this tutorial without going it through the airbrush. I know I kind of miss bits. That's, again, it's not the point because we're going to be going back over it. Shut up, compressor. We're going to be going back over it um, with normal paint. So, the next colour we're going to be applying to that once it's dry... Uh, we're going to be applying Rhinox Hide. Now this is going to be applied to all of the areas we're wanting to be red. So we're going to be putting this one on first. This is going to be a brushwork because um, I'm not going to risk... I'm trying to minimise the risk to the, to the green. So that will probably more than likely... This will be put on. I might mask off some areas and then I'll airbrush the Feast and Red over the top. Um, I might even airbrush a bit of corn red first. If you're doing it with a, a wet brush, um, sorry, a wet palette, just mix up the Rhinox hide right up to Mephiston and then give yourself some layering. 
uh, if you're just doing it by basic colours, what I'd recommend you do is do Rhinox Hide and then heavy dry brush with the corn red and then feast and red and that'll give you a lovely looking sort of crimson colour that's highlighted. So I've done the red, I just sprayed it with feast and dry brushed it with Evil Sun Scarlet. Um, as you can see I've already done some skulls which I didn't mean to do so I ended up <laughs> going over the uh, skulls on the uh, the actual units on these I mean um, these little gold bits have been done by doing silver and then putting Nasdreg yellow from the contrast paints over the top and that creates a nice little silver look I've also done um, the skulls the skulls are just your shabty bone with some seraphine sepia again we're not doing anything too overly complicated it's the armour that people are going to look at we're going to apply some silver even though I know I've done a bit of silver there we're going to put some silver, we're going to put it all over the weapons, over both, we're going to put it over the chimney stacks, we're going to put it all over these, the rest of it we're just going to leave, we're not going to do the tracks, you can do the tracks if you want, but I'm not going to, what I'm going to do with the tracks is I'm actually going to um, do my uh, other technique that I did with my Armageddon video, and we're going to paint them with, we're basically going to go all over the tracks with um, Nurgle's Rot, no it's not Nurgle's Rot, Typhus Corrosion, we let that dry, then we dry brush it uh, with various things to make it sort of like muddy and sticky and horrible, um, including some um, Necron compound as well. So that's to do. The fist symbol, that's on here. I'm going to be painting that in, painting the backboard black, and then I'll do that just with some um, layering techniques. So it'll just be uh, corn red, and then, well, it'll probably be bestial brown corn red and then it will be um, the evil sun scarlet in the corner that'll just be done with a wet palette right I know I'm not showing a lot of me working on this but it's just easier this way um, so first things first like I say let's get some silver on here Ooh, apologies so silver has been painted on all of this and now I'm going to hit all of the silver with no oil and I've also done the symbols in black so while the no oil is drying yeah I'm going to get the I'll show you how I'm going to do actually I'm going to actually show you how I do the uh, the red so it's already been painted with rhinoxide I'm going to put a bit corn red in there a bit of my water and I'm just going to I'll leave the bottom while I try and make it a stripe. And then we're going to do a bit more on red. This time just for a little bit of the Rhinox. And this is just when you're building everything up. Nice. Still wet. It all blends together nicely. And then I'm going to use it. Yeah, it's still wet now. I'll grab some in a moment. I'm just going to edge it now with some Evil Sun Scarlet. So, as you can see, silver has been done and then it's been highlighted with no oil. Not a lot of no oil. I just want to give it a bit of a highlight. And now we're going to use. Contrast paint. Uh, we're going to be using. I need a particular brush, and the contrast paint is going to be painted onto the areas of the last cans and everything else that's going to be black. Don't forget that this. I've not actually assembled this. This is just stayed assembled, but we're trying to get it onto the battle top as quick as we possibly can, and uh, it's going to take as long as you concentrate on this. It should take less than a day to get this up and running. Really. 
So the black's been painted on. And I'll be honest, that's nearly done. It's not taken us that long. I know the track's not done yet, but the transfers are going to go on next. And then I'm going to do the tracks. So I'm going to stick the transfers on. I'm going to have another video of that in a week of me actually sticking transfers on because I'm going to be doing several different units. So I'm going to show you guys how to properly do transfers. That should be out a week after this video. And um, yeah, I'm going to stick those on. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do these tracks. So at this particular stage, ignore the other marine. At this particular stage, get a light on Paul, come on. Let's get some highlights on this. Um, I have now gone and put typhus corrosion all over the tracks. Now there is some gaps in the tracks because of course we've not broken this figure down. We've just worked on it. You can fill these in with sterling mud which is what i'm going to do i'm going to basically put bits and blobs of sterling mud just mainly to cover some of these uh, holes and some of these mistakes like you can even have it backing up on there because the track will go round like that so you can even put a bit of sterling mud all over that bit and once sterling mud is dry we're going to go to the dry brush slash airbrush i'll be using an airbrush you can dry brush, it, brush this next stage we're going to be doing scrag brown followed by rhinoxide and we're just going to be putting that across the bottom bit of the track obviously I've not done the whole track but the bottom bit of the track all the top bits uh, just to give it a little tiny bit of mud effect and that's a quick easy way of actually painting up your tracks without really doing it having to do much now for those that's not worked with this I've actually got two lots of doing that's one of them out for those of you that's not worked with this stuff before it's like a texture paint now I'm not sure if Games Workshop make this anymore but it's really good and it's really clever because uh, it's like a basic material now I've got it's all faded off but it's more like a spatula like tool rather than a paintbrush and as you can see it picks up the paint I need nicely now I don't want loads I'm just gonna like on that there I'm gonna splodge it on and then my lid closes and you can just kind of scrape bits off and it just thickens up those tracks to make them look more muddy. Also gets rid of any sort of mistakes. It's actually pretty good, even though I mean I'm using this on a second hand one, but if you make some mistakes on a proper figure, and uh, I'm looking at you Forge World. Because <laughs> let's be fair, you, a lot of people can make mistakes on those. It's really good for filling those particular pieces. And I've just gone and put my hand in it. Marvellous. Hopefully not pull it all off. A bit more dabs. And when that's dried, we're just going to do the dry brush effect. Um, and the longest period on this figure, if I'm honest, is the drying process. Everything else don't really take that long. And then we're going to fill these gaps in up back. Kind of if you want to put a little bit running down the bottom, I'm not going to bother. Kind of just as if we're filling it, but it's a mud effect. It helps that it's already brown. I'm going to fill these bits here. Need to get some more, scrape it off the bottom. Don't get me wrong, if I were doing this properly, I'd have stripped all the figure down and done it properly. But the idea is, is to get this on the battlefield ASAP. Right, that's going to be about enough, I think. I'm going to let that dry. And then when we come back, it should all be airbrushed, slash dry brushed, with the effect that we're going for. So that's nice and dry, looking pretty good as mud now. So, like I said, the next bit 
you can grab your large dry brush and you can dry brush into the tracks or you can grab your airbrush and you can airbrush into the tracks and it's the next color again we're going to be using is scrag brown um put it on lightly don't try and get it over too much stuff i'm just going to try and apply it kind of more towards the middle and then we go over that again afterwards on a lower so if you're going to be putting it across here as an example you put the scrag brown across a thicker chunk and then the other other would be a little tiny bit still got that on there um, just to represent the fact that the mud is drying and once that's done once that's completed we'll get on to the next stage so apart from little bits like the lights you can pretty much call that done if you want to now I am going to because of course I'm working with an airbrush I know I keep saying this but you, could, you can try this with a dry brush but this won't look the same I'm now going to put some I'm going to dirty up some of this exhaust so these heat vents I'm going to dirty up here I'm, I'm not quite sure for heat vents these two little vents here and of course the stacks they're all going to get airbrushed and I'm going to airbrush them with rhinoxide again should have saved some but I didn't because I'm an idiot and then Abaddon Black um, so I'm going to put the rhinoxide in first and Abaddon Black and then we're going to do the lights now the lights I'll actually record that for you this is going to be done in a particular way using masking tape really. uh, using modeling masking tape not normal masking tape because otherwise that might rip off your paint so this is modeling masking tape we're going to masking tape the top off and then we're going to do the lights with the airbrush and that's going to be like a concoction of yellow and white so we're going to try and get it like a really quite a bright color uh, but it's mainly going to be a bright sort of um, bright white with a yellow tinge is the best way I can actually think of putting that I might use the contrast now Greg yellow for the uh, addition uh, trying to make it nice and thin and we've done that to after the weathering because of course it will lay on top of the actual weathering itself Right, so I'm going to crack on with that, and then when I come back, when the video restarts, I'm going to have masking tape across here, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay, we have the masking tape on. Apologies for any compressor noise you might hear. Uh, I'm already trying to test this to make sure it's coming out all right. Now, white is the most notorious colour to work with. Uh, I have made it a little bit yellowy, uh, just because I want to. And what I'm going to try and do is just a circular motion the lights themselves now i've put the masking tape across the top because a light would not go above its original source unless because it's supposed to have an overhang so let's see if i can can already tell that this white is wanting to block the crap out of my airbrush I hate using white when airbrushing if anyone's got a really good white I can use I did have some Vallejo airbrush white but I can't seem to get hold of it at the moment which is a bit of a pain Now, do it all the way across because I don't really want to be messing around. Let's take a look. And look at that. We've done the lights. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We've got the tracks done. We've got little bits of botches, you know, hidden. And. I don't think that's taken me, if I was to work on it for a good session, I bet I could get that done in a day. It has taken me, well, maybe a little bit longer with drying time, so probably a day and a half. Which, if you buy an eBay purchase, you don't want to be sitting it in Dettel for about four days, so you can actually get all the uh, gunk off. Especially if you're not, from a distance, that will look alright on my battlefield. When people pick it up, they'll be able to notice the problems. And don't get me wrong, when people pick it up, notice the problems, I will tell them, I did it quick. 
Uh, same with a lot of the stuff that I'm trying to get through at the moment. But it's my stuff, so therefore I'm trying to get through it quick. So if you are wanting to know how to do an eBay Land Raider in Crimson Fist pattern real quick, that's how you can get it done. Uh, big help from Green Stuff's World uh, metal, metal Colour uh, because that allowed that blue to come through. And that blue looks amazing. It does look a bit duller than the blue that I use for my Marines, but it'll not matter. Not to me anyway. Right. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button if you want to see more. Um, also, as well, there's my Instagram, which is Rootstem uh, Multimedia. And then, of course, you've got me on Facebook, which is Rootstem Multimedia. And I've got my own website, which is rootstem.co.uk. If you're ever wanting commission work, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't do that for commission work. You'd have it done properly with the dental and everything else. But if you are looking for commission painting, if you go over to rootstem.co.uk, send me a message, tell me what you've got. I'll be able to give you a price. Majority of models start at about £4 for a standard 28mm. Right, thank you very much, man. See you later.